The next mechanoreceptor is called Pacinian's corpuscle. So Pacinian's, and this is another corpuscle, another body we're going to talk about right here. And again, we'll have some external stimulus right here. Could be somebody poking you or some other type of stimulus. It's transmitted deep into our skin. Pacinian's corpuscle will respond. It looks like this. And it's also known as the onion layered mechanoreceptor. And you can kind of tell why, right? Because there are a whole bunch of layers here. And another term for Pacinian's corpuscle is the lamellar corpuscle. And lamella just means a layer. So there are many lamella around here. And in fact, that's an important term. So I'll write it here. Lamella. So this is a lamellar corpuscle. And it's also kind of a fun word to say. And so notice all of these layers here. What happens is that when we have this force transmitted deep into our skin, we'll have, let's say, this layer here I'm trying to outline right there. That layer will stay still, but the layer immediately outside of it that I'm outlining right here. And so this outer force right here will cause this outer ring right here to respond by spinning. It'll kind of turn this way relative to the inside disk. And compared to Meissner's corpuscle above, in order for this disk to move in this direction and relative to this inner disk right here, we would require a little more significant of a stimulus. So we'd want something like a push or a poke to cause this disk to move relative to this disk. And it'd be the same thing as what we saw earlier with Meissner's corpuscle, that when one disk moved past the other, there's an opportunity for sodium to enter this ring. And this ring is also an epithelial cell that's been specialized. And they're all kind of these concentric rings that lead into the middle. And what do you think sits here right dab in the center? Well, if you guessed an afferent nerve fiber, you are absolutely right. And so the sodium ions will kind of go through between these rings or these epithelial cells to get to the center. And eventually, that would be a lot of sodium building up in this afferent nerve fiber, thus generating an action potential that will be sent to our central nervous system. And so if all this began from kind of a significant stimulus like a push, that means that Pacinian's corpuscle likely perceives deep touch. And it's deep touch of hairy and non-hairy skin. And an example of that would be kind of what I drew up here. That's just going to be a poke. So a very strong poke. Not like what you see on Facebook, but when someone actually pokes you in real life would cause this type of stimulus. And as we mentioned above with Meissner's corpuscle, we're going to have this exact thing here, and I'll just kind of copy paste it in, that we're going to require constantly changing stimulus to keep on firing and sending a message to the central nervous system. And this makes sense, right? Because when we're taking the subway to work or school, and there's so many people that people just have to kind of be like pushing and shoving together to fit in one car, you won't even notice that someone's pushing against you after some time. And finally, if this is going to be sort of a significant stimulus that perceives deep touch, we can deduce then that Pacinian's corpuscle will sit lower than Meissner's corpuscle, and sure enough, it's found deep in the hypodermis, or the subcutaneous tissue sometimes. So it's pretty deep there. And as we move further along, we can talk about the next mechanoreceptor that is called Merkel's disc. So Merkel's disc. We've been talking about corpuscles all this time, but now we'll just talk about a single disc. And our stimulus will be the same if we have some type of external force right here that kind of pushes and transmits this force deep within our skin, we'll have Merkel's disc respond. And I don't have a fancy picture for it, and that's because Merkel's disc is actually just a specialized keratinocyte or an epithelial cell that's not unlike the regular cells that you have in your epidermis. So it kind of sits in your epidermis as we'll talk about too. So it kind of looks like this. And as I'll mention in a little bit, this also has an afferent nerve fiber that sits right there. And the reason why we have all of these little vertices right here is because Merkel's disc holds a whole bunch of vesicles. You might remember that term, vesicles, which are just pockets that have membrane around them that's sitting within the cell. These pockets hold a neuropeptide. So I'll draw a little neuropeptide in each of them. You've probably heard of neuropeptides before, but it's just a peptide, which is a string of amino acids that talk to the nervous system. So I'll label that. This is a neuropeptide sitting within our vesicle in our specialized epithelial cell, the Merkel's disc. And what I'll draw down here is a little receptor. And so I'll just write 
this is going to be an N, just to be a neuropeptide, NP receptor, just to abbreviate because I don't have that much space. That's an NP receptor. And so what will happen is that when we have this force transmitted right here, it actually causes the vesicle to open up. And so this kind of splits open right there and allows the neuropeptide to be liberated. And it's going to be present within the cell, kind of floating around. And then over time, it'll come and sit down right here. And when it lands on the neuropeptide receptor, we'll actually start having ion channels open. So ion channels which should signal sodium. Ion channels will open that allow sodium to enter Merkel's disc and eventually make its way into this afferent nerve fiber. And that generates the action potential that will go communicate with our central nervous system. And with Merkel's disc, like we mentioned, this is just a specialized keratinocyte or an epithelial cell. It's just like what we have sitting in our epidermis. So much so that it's located itself in the epidermis. It's found in the stratum basale and sometimes it could be even lower in the the papillary dermis so it's in the interface between the stratum basale of the epidermis and the papillary dermis so I'll write two here to emphasize it's in between these guys and so the trick is that if you remember that this is a specialized keratinocyte like what's in the epidermis you remember then that it sits pretty high up in the stratum basale to the papillary dermis and so it's responsible for perceiving light touch. Light touch, this is going to be on both hairy and non-hairy skin, but it's different from Meissner's corpuscle because this is sustained light touch. So this is something that's going to keep on firing as long as you have the stimulus present. And that makes sense because when the stimulus is there and it's causing this sensation, as long as the neuropeptide is connected to this receptor, we're going to keep on having these ion channels open and the sodium coming in and generating the action potential. And remember, it's sustained light touch, okay? So as long as the stimulus is there, we're going to keep on noticing it.